Here is my example. Uh, should I put something on top? Maybe. Why not? X squared. <coughs> okay. So, a disclaimer. I don't know how this will go. This may go very well. This may go very badly. All right. So what's different about this one, and maybe slightly more challenging, that we haven't really encountered yet when doing integration by partial fractions? The denominator doesn't have fractions. <laughs> the denominator doesn't have factors. It is not factored. And factoring the denominator is a prerequisite for doing partial fractions. So when it is not factored, you have to factor it. And there is a theorem in mathematics called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra, which states that any polynomial can be factored into linear and quadratic terms. It's a very, very interesting theorem. It doesn't give you a method for doing it. It just guarantees that it's always possible, theoretically. So that can be a very, very challenging task. So the way to approach this task, there are more robust ways of doing it and less robust ways of doing it. But the first thing that anyone would do is try to guess a root. Try to guess a value of x that will turn this into zero. And if there's any hope of having an integer root like that, it has to be a divisor of the free coefficient. Does this bring back any kinds of memories? Of, for guessing roots of polynomials? Yes. So here, the only two legitimate integer guesses are 1 and minus 1. Does 1 work? Obviously not, because it'll be 4. What about minus 1? Yes. Minus 1 is a root, which means that x plus 1 is a factor. x plus 1 is a factor because minus 1 is a root. So now you can divide by it. Now I'm going to do long division of polynomials for the, very, for, for the second time in my life. Let's see how it goes. So that will tell us what will be the other factor, the quadratic factor. And this is guaranteed to work without a remainder. Why? Because minus 1 is the root, so this must be a factor. So, obviously, x squared is what we need to cancel x cubed. Okay, so 0, <laughs> that's great, plus x plus 1, okay, so just x plus 1, you don't even have to write 0, I guess. See, I'm only doing this for a second time, so. Okay, and x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is 1, so plus 1, that's all it is. So now I will take the partial fractions procedure offline, because I don't like doing it under the integration sign, let's just do it on its own. 1 has x plus 1 on the bottom, and a on top, because it's a linear function in the denominator, so a constant in the numerator, plus, in the denominator we have x squared plus 1, so we must go with the linear function in the numerator, bx plus c. Okay, now let's combine them. This is the result of multiplying x by x squared plus 1. And here we have to multiply, oh, we've never done a multiplication this complicated, where we have to foil, but that won't foil us. <laughs> Combine like terms. Again, I'm grabbing my blue marker. So a plus b must equal 1. Do you guys see why? Yeah. Let me put parentheses around this just for the purposes of grouping. Ah, now I regret it, but it's too late. <laughs> b plus c. <laughs> must be 0. I think I made a mistake. And a plus c must be 0, right? Because we're going for x squared. OK, so I think we have to solve the system with three equations and three unknowns. OK, we'll bite the bullet. Let's write it out first. Okay. 
Let's see. One half, one half, minus one half. How about that? You're happy with that? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So, I'm just going to plug this in right here. Okay, equal. So this one is easy. Here, let me just write what we have so we see it very clearly. In fact, I want to have the derivative of this in the numerator. So I will multiply it by 2. And now I can break it up into two pieces. So if all of this looks like wizardry, wizardry, right, you just have to know what target I'm going to. I just need to pick out the terms that I know how to integrate. So this gives me one quarter log of x squared plus one. And this is my favorite arc tan. There we go. Yeah. 